Yeah. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're here with the final episode of our cast on current topics in the state of alluvium and IAPs that are under discussion now uh, with Vet and Daraji. Uh, one of the really big topics that I've seen some, let's say, passionate engagement from the community on is this point around changing the rev disk structure for Iluvatars. Uh, and so for those that haven't maybe been as active in governance chat lately, um, the question has come up. Because the project is the project is looking to expand the overall runway, uh, you know, there's been discussions over the past months about capital raises. We want to make sure that we're getting as much revenue in as possible. Um, the proposal was raised. What if for the Iluvatar sale, we as a community agreed to forego RevDIS to the, I, uh, the ILV holders and instead took either all or some fraction of the revenue coming in from the Iluvatar sale and sent it directly to the treasury? And so the main kind of discussion points that I've seen have been 100% of the, the sale, 50% of the sale, 0% of the sale. I've seen some like hybrid 50% up to like a specific dollar amount and then like, you know, some fractional amounts above. So you can kind of slice and dice the, you know, the structure in a lot of different ways. But for today, we want to talk about this broader question. Would it be the right thing for the community going forward to take this approach, change the revenue structure here, uh, presumably as a one-off event for the Iluvatar sale, uh, to avoid maybe having to do another capital raise in the current market conditions? So that's a little bit of the background. Um, maybe, uh, Daraji, I'll, I'll kick it over to you first. So I know you shared your thoughts in, in the community, but uh, what's your take on this? Is is RevDisc sort of the sacred cow that we really shouldn't touch? Is there, uh, you know, are we in such a, a crisis right now that we have to make a move at this current point? What do you think? I don't think it's either of those two, but I think we live in a very different world in Web3 today than we did even a week ago and six months ago. And I see a lot of conversation that is backwards looking of, if only we had done this raise then, or if only we had done this at land sale, we would be in a different spot. And for me, it's, we're here today. Like this is the problem that you need to solve. And so the, we could have done it differently. It's the community's fault. It's the founder's fault, doesn't matter what is the problem you need to solve today and what is the situation? And so that's the spot where we just need to get clear at a high level of what is the runway? What realistically is the path to a paid product that is the sustaining revenue of the organization? And what do you need to get there? At the same time, I, I know you and I talked this a little bit last night, like it's a scary time right now. And the nice thing about us talking about this today is we're not in panic mode yet. And so we have a number of options on the table and it really is assessing what is the best way to ensure that if this goes on longer, if there's not VC funding that's available, if Web3 gaming doesn't take off in 2023, like do we have sustaining revenue to do that? And it's none of these are the right answer. And I think that's the hardest thing of is RevDiz the sacred cow of this? Is player rewards? Is the treasury? And like, I have my opinions on it, but that's strictly that of my opinions. And I think we need to talk as a broader community of what do we need to accomplish? And you plan for the worst and you hope for the best. And that's the spot that we're in today. So, Vet, what about you? I know I think this for you was a pretty cut and dried uh, question, just given the market conditions now. What, what's your take? Yeah, it, it it does feel for the most part cut and dry. Uh, the the one part where it's like this isn't actually something that the council should decide completely unilaterally. Um, I know they did like a, a little Gleam.io survey. As far as I'm concerned, that's not a proper survey. Nobody was um, informed of it officially. It's just not been clearly displayed that this is really going on. So uh, I, my my viewpoint is that what we should do is poll the entire ILV holder community through a proper like snapshot vote, the way that we would in a council election, VILV style, square root and all, and, and really just ask, are people open to this idea 
yes or no just like that simple and if it if it is and it comes down to it and it's like 95 percent of people are like yeah we're happy to give up some rev disc temporarily acknowledging that this is a one-time only thing um just to increase runway then i like if it's that strong a majority I, i'm game for it being a hundred percent up to a certain amount of um like raised runway and then put it down to just 50 percent going directly to the to the runway and then once we hit another milestone maybe just maybe push it back to 25 and do another milestone maybe not that's something to be determined by 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 council at that point uh but if it is much more like 60 40 and it's a bit it's a bit closer maybe starting at 50 percent and then winding it down but I, I i think it's just it just makes sense one thing that i i'm a strong like i'm putting put my personal foot down on is like silv2 that remains like that can still be used and that's obviously not going to be adding anything to the runway but people have been accumulating slv2 uh whether that be by claiming it or by 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 buying it from others who have claimed it people have been accumulating it and we we can't be um you know just turning our back on that side of the community and i i, I don't think that would be fair what, what what's your perspective on this annie yeah so i i think i'm i'm somewhere in the middle, but probably kind of on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum as you are, Vet. So in general, um, I th I don't have enough information at the moment to, to make a, a hard yes or no on this. So what I would take into account are what is the actual runway? I know we've got kind of a, a general statement, you know, end of 2023-ish, um, but like I, I would want to have a little bit more specifics about that, looking at the burn rate and saying, okay, where do we think projections are going to be going through the market for next year? Um, I've got, and and many of you know, I've got dozens of projects that I'm working with outside of Alluvium as well. And a lot of them, especially this week that I've been in touch with, it's a, it's a very scary time for them because wherever they are in terms of capital raises now, if they're going for a seed round, they, they finish pre-seed, they're going to you know, like a series A um, in general they're very concerned about market conditions. And some of those projects, including very, very good projects, will not make it out of the next six months intact because of some of the, you know, the impacts into the broader uh, funding around Web3 gaming. And so I, I think we have to understand the severity of the situation here. That said, I don't have enough details about the specific specifics of Alluvium to be able to make a, a true call. The second piece that I'd like to, to get some more feedback on is what are the actual projections that we've got, not, not like we as a community, but that the Alluvium team actually has for revenue? Because the point that you mentioned, Vet, which is SILV2 should still be used. 100% agree with that. Like that for me is never a discussion either. Um, but I also am a little concerned that we may see the same thing for Iluvatars that we did for land in terms of the distribution. And if 90% of the Iluvatar sale is being used, is being, um, you know, paid from SILV2, the amount of ETH that actually comes in, we might be talking about making a pretty, frankly, in my mind, a pretty dramatic change to the rev disk structure for a pretty low impact to the runway, right? If we end up bringing, let's say, a million dollars worth of ETH for the size of the team, you're talking about just a, you know, a, what was that a week of runway, a couple weeks of runway? Um, it's that's not really in my mind enough to justify the type of a change to the rev disk structure that we're talking about. If, on the other hand, uh, you know, the team's projections are we would net in terms of ETH spend, you know, 10 million, 15, 20 million dollars. All of a sudden you're talking about a very meaningful amount. Um, I think, I think functionally, um, I would be much more open to the discussion if we're saying this actually can prevent us having to do another capital raise. And so therefore for the good of the protocol, um, it makes sense. So like personally, I don't really care from like an investor standpoint, but I, I worry about the long-term ramifications to the project because we're going to see market ups and downs. My, my hope is for the next 25 years, the economic structures that we have in place for Alluvium continue to work. And Revdis is a critical component of that, um, both for the community as well as for the treasury and the project. And so if we're willing to make a change, we better make sure that it's for a darn good reason. And an existential threat for the project, of course, I don't think that we're there yet. And so 
I would more want to have some more information and, and some discussions about it before we do change the rev disk structure. Um, again, you know, it's to some degree you could say, well, if we just do a capital raise, you know, you could do if effectively like a buyback later on with that. You could look at loans um, for the project. There's a number of different ways that we could raise capital um, that might essentially be like a left pocket, right pocket type of approach where you can keep the rev to structure in place and still kind of land in the same spot as you were originally uh, without having to change that. So again, those are some of the topics that I would be looking at and, and discussing with, um, you know, with Danny and, and the rest of the team for this type of a dialogue. Yeah, so as as you mentioned, like if it only is going to raise like a mil, is it worth making such a drastic change to the tokenomics? And the thing with an Aluvatar sale is that it's not f happening for a month. We're, once Aluvatar sale, be like selling begins, it's not a sale, it's selling. Like that's forever. There's always going to be Aluvatars from that point onwards. So at that point, if we've introduced this and we've said once we've raised this amount, then I, I think that's kind of more okay in the fact that it's not something that's a short-term thing and then it's over and then maybe we didn't raise enough, maybe it wasn't w worth making all these these changes um, of the of the actual rev disk mechanics. It's something that will eventually reach its its um, milestones. Um, I believe I, I do agree with you that it, it would be good to have like greater an analysis on what is exactly expected from a sale like that. So like. I, I, I don't discount you there at all. I, I, I totally agree. Um, I, 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 it, it's something that that will we'll have to be discussed further, though, on 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 that side. Diraji. So, so I'll say I gave the very political answer when I talked the first time. To flip it around and say, who am I and what would I do if I was king for a day? I would be incredibly conservative right now. Like for me, selling uh, player rewards even doing a capital raise with treasury at this point scares me because to me it's selling boards out of a house that you're building when the boards are at the minimum market price and revd is is hey this is the vision of the product this is the thing that attracted the investors but if we look at why were the investors attracted in the first place for me it's I wanted to play this game. This was going to be high quality in a space of asset ownership that I actually believe in. And so I want to put everything that I have into ensuring this thing survives and doing a change to what, what an investment thesis was before there was a product is very different than doing what I can to make sure this thing actually comes to fruition because to Annie's point, there's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't make it this year because of what's going on. And if that means 100% of revd is for anything, like even a Louvatar is like to a threshold, to a point of let's make sure this survives. We don't know what 24 is going to look like. We don't know what 25 is going to look like. What is adoption of Web3 for mainstream gamers? Those are unknowns. We can speculate and we can do surveys to figure out what do we think this thing's going to sell for? But we don't know yet. And so for me, and as a steward of the DAO on the council right now, I'm about enabling that 2030, 2040 vision. And right now, it is not keeping early investors happy. It is keeping the lights on for a the foreseeable future. And I, the, the, the other point to what you said is, beyond like not keep... Our, our job isn't keeping early investors happy. I, I think the other side of it is that we're in actually a really great community where I think early investors will actually be happy to support this. And and I think that's the bright side of it, where even in this level of like difficulty and, you know, there's just it's just a bear market out there. You know, FTX dropped the other day. It's hard times all around in the crypto space. The fact that I, I, I'm pretty sure all the community's I mean, the community did in, in, in the small votes and discussions we've already had, like they've been supportive of these ideas. And I, th I think that that's it's great to see all around. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the sentiment that I've seen in general is everyone is wanting to support the project to the best of, of their abilities. Right. And that's that's why this one's such a tough one in my mind. 
there's legitimate argument make in both directions that are clearly in the best interest of the protocol. And and it just depends on how you see sort of the long-term ramifications of that change to RevDIS, how critical a situation you see within the industry. Um, and so so I, I agree. I think, Diraja, your, your point is, is right. And I've made the, the statement, if at any point we get into the position where keeping the lights on is a question, that is that is point number one. Like I, that's that's how I open my council nomination video. Don't run out of money. That's rule number one of a startup. Rule number two: don't forget rule number one. Period. Right. So so if if you're ever at a point where that's at risk, you need to take a step back and figure out what you're going to do to avoid that. The question is like, what's the appropriate am- amount of runway? I know Kieran's even shared like he's he's a little bit more risk uh, you know, open to risk than some of the other uh, you know executives in Alluvium, and and based on that dialogue, he would be okay. What I would say is the projects that I'm advising. So if I if I take Alluvium out and like I'm not part of the community um, yet, we're in early stages. If someone comes to me right now today and tells me they've got 12 months ish worth of runway, I'm going to tell them, okay, what you should do then is not do a full raise. What you should do is try and find basically a bridge somehow, whether you're going to do a capital raise, whether you're going to launch a product in you know an early stage or early form to get revenue in, whether you're going to take a loan to help meet your, you know, your, your requirements just to, to get to the next stage of launching, whatever that is, whether you're getting an alpha out, whether you're getting a beta out, whether you're launching a product, whatever that next step is, wait for the market conditions to evolve some, show your investors what you're building. And then when that happens, you're going to have a much better chance to uh, really be able to convince them to put more money in, to do an actual capital raise later on. So I'm not a big fan of doing a capital raise if you've already got 12 months of runway in the current environment, frankly. I think it's going to not be better immediately, but over the next 12 months, for sure, there will be better times for a team as large as Alluvium. You can, of course, extend runway through a number of other uh, you know, other approaches too. So that's the type of advice and, and dialogue that I'm having with other projects. And so I think, you know, that that openness for, uh, you know, for risk and for, um, you know, trying to position ourselves to where we aren't giving up too much equity in the short term, I think is an important consideration. I do think that there's so many backers for Illuvium that if we were truly hitting that crisis point where it's like, you know what, we're down to four months of runway, people will come, P- people will absolutely be willing to do so. And so doing, you know, doing that sort of a raise right now, or forcing a major change to RevDIS in the, the current time still feels to me like it's a little bit too early. Um, but again, some of this depends on how quickly we can actually get the game out and have legitimate products that we're selling to customers. Well, one of those legitimate products that we can sell to customers is Illuvatars. And one of the ways that we are avoiding having to do the raise is by ha- like doing this with Illuvatars and having this RevDisc change. Because like part of it is we actually don't want to do the raise. We don't. And but like if if it is required because w- like it's easy to be uh, to say like oh we've only got 12 months of runway um you know that's plenty in a team of five to ten people but in a team of 180 people that's a wait and it should be a wait because it's it's like once we get near the end that's like millions of dollars that's a lot of money at the end of the day so it, it, it it's it's one of those things where I think if we can mitigate some of it by not doing a raise or raising minimum amounts and also getting some through through this um, Aluvatar sale, that can that can just create some room, extra room to breathe that, that, that tides us over to potentially some slightly better market conditions. But we also shouldn't sleep and wait for improving market conditions too much because 12 months can quickly become six months, can quickly become... We're, we're, you know, it's it, we're on the edge, and suddenly we'd be willing to take worse worse um, terms just because we need to survive. And I think it really is good to make decisions more early and and actually raise money early and have have a large um, runway rather than you know just being being on the edge and because that that's not for most people and certainly not for most creatives involved in like if you if you know that your job security might be at risk in six months you might start looking for another job and i don't want you to do that personally if you're working for alluvium and you're the best 
out there. You know, I'd rather you you feel secure in your job because we have a ton of runway. Um, that's that's my perspective. You don't want to start piecing it back together when when it starts falling apart. You want to be doing that pro proactively, as as I think Doraji is arguing. Yeah, one of the ways that I think about it is just the idea of what if I'm wrong. Yeah. And no matter what position you take, you say, what if I'm wrong about this? And so if we look at this and it's like, okay, I'm going to hold RevDiz back and all that ETH I'm going to put into the team, extend the runway. What if I'm wrong? Well, that means we have too much runway. We have too much money. We do a buyback. We do a some other mechanism of RevDiz to return that money. What if I say, no, Let's do Louvatars. Let's commit to it. All of that goes revved is as normally planned. What if I'm wrong? I run out of runway. I need to figure out some other mechanism of doing it. I'm now in a worse situation where I need to do a raise and the market's gotten worse. And so that's just how I think is the what if I'm wrong mantra and take whichever one of those sets me up for the reversible choice. If it's an irreversible choice, that's something totally different. And you say, am I willing to make that commitment? But that's how I'd approach it. Really yeah, awesome. and I think, yeah, I think, I think it's a good way to look at it. I, I would, I would also posit though, that I think the first time that as a project, we make the decision to change the Revdis model to where Revdis is, is no longer the, it's no longer the approach that it has has always been shared as that is an irreversible decision and and we and and again i'm i'm sitting up here too saying we can't run out of money as a project right if you run out of money also revdis is not going to be a thing anymore so like i'm you know please don't you know don't misunderstand but i also think that is an irreversible choice and so we better be darn sure that we we wouldn't have another option to raise four months from now or three months from now or, you know, or whatever. Um, when frankly, I, I think there are ways that we should be able to be getting additional revenue coming in from the products, right? Based on the generalized timeline, I know we haven't seen dates out yet, um, but presumably from all the dialogue, we're within a few months here of having the alpha version of Alluvium Zero out. We're going to have, you know, alpha or beta version of, of um, you know, the overworld out. Uh, you know, we're not going to have the full game launched by that point in time, but I would expect that we have some ability to generate some revenue starting soon. And if we do get to the point where the runway starts to shrink and we say, all right, we need to do a capital raise, you know, we can do that, right? There's there's nothing that says we couldn't do another capital raise, sell tokens from the vault at that point in, you know, unfortunately, a down a down market. And then at the end, if that extends the runway further and we don't need it all, okay, you know, we can go and do a buyback later on, right? You, so I, I also don't think that either, you know, that that, that is a, you know, an, an unreversible position because we can still raise later. Again, I'm assuming we've got, you know, a little bit more than a 12 month window here. So, so for me, it's more, you have a little bit of time still. Uh, Vet, I like your point about not putting ourselves, kind of boxing ourselves into a corner, but I think, you know, I think you would be hard pressed to find a worse week in uh, Web three gaming to try and talk about doing a raise than than as we're recording this, the middle of November twenty twenty two. Probably eat my words two weeks from now or something, but hopefully <laughs> things don't continue to cascade. But they usually the the thing is they usually do <laughs> like cascade, and cascade is actually a very good word because it it describes it very viscerally. But um, that speculation without speculating i think daraji's mantra of what if what if i'm wrong is is basically what i'm also where i'm also coming from and like you you, you mentioned what what well you know overworld comes and then this comes and we can raise revenue we can't raise revenue from any of those they all go into rev dis like it's still the same thing so i, I personally I have no issue making this irreversible change that I agree should not be taken lightly under any circumstances, but I think it can be taken even with like when we do have over 12 months runway right now, um, we have at least until the end of next year at minimum. Um, that's, that's the situation we're in, but what I think it's better to extend it and be wrong than, um, you know, Ext not extend it and be wrong uh, because then we do get 
put into at least more of a corner than we are currently. And I, I think, what, what if we're in the best spot right now to do this? Um, so, uh, uh, if the community, that's why, that's why I'm, I'm pro a proponent of having like a proper vote on snapshot for this, because I don't think we should be doing this to a large degree or like, especially not a hundred percent. If like most of the community thinks this is out of order, you know, I, 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 but if 95% of, of ILV holders decide to vote during like, I don't know, like a week vote or something, or even if it's a three day vote, like advertise it properly on the Twitter, on the discord, even send out a mailing list for this, for this, um, you know, poll, um, that only stakers can participate in. And suddenly we've got very direct sentiment. And if the community is willing to support this and acknowledge that it's a one-time thing and it's just a complete awareness of the context of the situation, then if that puts us in a better position, whether we're right or wrong, it still puts us in a better position. It gives us more runway. Too much runway is not a problem. Too little is. So I, I don't mind having too much runway because we're going to need more runway eventually. We always are going to need more runway eventually. Um, and so why not do this just to hedge our bets? Um, yeah, and I, I think I, I will that, challenge you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Daraj. I, I was just going to say the one thing I would challenge you on there, Vet, is this is a representative organization. Yeah. And so I, as a current council member, it's not my job to punt this back to the community. It's my job to say, we've got the right information. It's exactly to Annie's point. Like we've had the conversations with Danny, with Kieran, we can bring in individuals and have that confidential talk. We've got to make the call and having a community sentiment is nice of like how many people are going to walk away. If we choose this direction, that's an important data point to have. But at the end of the day, I'm not necessarily just going to agree with what the community says in any kind of poll, even if it's based on VILV and ownership. Oh, no, I completely it's a council agree with call. you. Yeah. I, com I, I still think it's a council call. They, we're, we're, not, we're not asking them to vote on an IIP. They're not voting on an IIP. They're voting purely for sentiment. But I think this is one of those situations where... where the sentiment on anything in the Discord, it's not very clear. There's a lot of holders in Illuvium that are going to be affected by this that will not know until probably even way months into the future. Some might not realize until next year because they just they live in their lives. They just trust in their Illuvium bags and it like that's that that's my only point. I just want to hear as much sentiment as possible to be better educated to take my decision. It's still our decision because at the end of the day it needs to be um, because we also have more information beyond just the sentiment. But I, I think that there, there are times, especially in something as like serious as this, that legit can't be taken back, that we should be taking sentiment on that level of scale. And I, I, I think it's good to do so, um, especially if we intend to take that route, because I think, Yes, we are responsible for taking the decision, but I also want to know that the community stands behind something that's going to affect them so widely. Um, and I know that decisions have been taken before that affect people without their like consent for the good of the DAO, but this is one where, it, I don't know, it just feels different. It feels like a different case to me. Yeah, and, and I think the... The fact that it, it is again fundamentally changing the revdis structure, which which is frankly the maybe the number one selling point behind the entire structure of the tokenomics of Alluvium, that's the that's the piece that gives me a lot of pause here. And and so I I, I agree. I think you know having having the dialogues is really important. So in the Discord, us having the discussion here too. So like you can see sort of me as a, a, in a very engaged community member, but that also doesn't have all of that that degree of information on some of the financial positions and so on. Um, those are the topics that you know that that I'm wondering about. I'm sure there are other people that are in the same a same boat, uh, whether they're you know, basically just, hey, we're going to trust or, you know, or, or we want every piece of, you know, financial information about the entire project for the last three years before we, you know, would be able to agree to it. I mean, I think, I think you're going to get all different kinds of positions, but taking, you know, taking that into account is important. I do think at the end of the day, 
and and I I shared this um, in I think in my my interview with TSG. You are representatives of the DAO for a reason, because it's not appropriate for every single community member to try and get to this level of information and detail and financial reporting and 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 all of these analyses that you should be having at your disposal to take a decision like this. That's the reason the structure is set up in the way that it is for you to make that call. And if if people in the DAO think that it was not the right decision and you know you don't have a good reason for it or whatever, then it's their prerogative to to vote for someone different for the next epoch, right? That's the way that the whole thing works. And so you know my my hope and my confidence in you all as the as the council is you'll take all those points into account and wouldn't make that decision lightly um, in a way that that couldn't be undone um, for you know for no no good reason so I think you know from my perspective having had the dialogue I hope anyone that watches the video also feels like you know this is being given the appropriate uh, degree of gravitas that it needs um, and and the you know the importance of the dialogue and certainly for those that have not weighed in and given their feedback and positions, I do so because I know that both of you and, and some of the other council members have been active in the discussions uh, for this point, and it's a, it's a critical one for uh, the future of the protocol. So definitely um, thank you guys for that open sharing today. Now, this, this has been a really good one and actually the longest of the series. Um, mm -hmm. But tomorrow we'll be back with some sort of non-Illuvium, like we'll, we'll be doing the FTX chat and and then the day after maybe we'll go into royalties uh royal ethes of nfts but we'll see you all then peace <laughs>